Here we go. Three, two, one. Boom! And welcome to the Big Honker Podcast brought to you by Lucky Duck. I'm Jeff Stanfield with the world famous Andy Shaver. If you want turkeys, you need to get rid of armaments. Yes, you Lucky do. Lucky Duck's got everything you need to get rid of those pesky uh, raccoons, uh, coyotes, all sorts of nasty critters that are nest raiders. So uh, they've also got a brand new kennel out, five star crash test rated. Feel good about putting your pup in it. Got a question for you before we get into this podcast. Okay. Do you give two shits if the King of England died or not? No, I'm not I mean, I, either. Personally, I don't. But okay. I mean, it's a big deal over there. Well, we're talking to a Canadian. I just want to get your American opinion on this before right. it is because big rumor mill today is that King Charles is dead. Well, which I don't give a shit anyways. The only royal family member that ever died that bothered me was when Princess died because she was a smoking hush. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Really care less. With us today from Black Folds, Alberta, Mr. J.J. Miller. J.J., how are you, sir? I'm doing good, guys. How are you? Well, are you upset about the king being dead if he's dead? Or do you give a shit either? Uh, I, can, I can honestly say I didn't even know, so I just found out from you guys. Well, I'm, that's, the, the, that's the rumor. I hate to be I the bearer it. of bad news. I highly doubt it's true. If it's coming from Jeff Stanfield, it's probably not true. So you think he's alive still? I mean, I, sure. But who cares? I mean, I'm sure a lot of people I don't care. understand. I don't understand that. I well, do. You're I, not supposed to. You're American. You quit. We quit giving a shit in 1776. So it, 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 it's not a it's not a mystery that you don't give a shit. OK, I don't understand how that family hasn't gotten woke. Well, I mean, they, they built their whole thing on slavery and incest. There ain't no difference between the royal family and a bunch of fucking hillbillies from Appalachians or Arkansas, except maybe the English family, the royal family's got better teeth. They're all inbred. They all married their fucking cousins. You have to marry a cousin. I don't get it. Just like I don't understand Trudeau in Canada. Everybody I know from Canada is a great guy that thinks the same as us, but they're overrun by a bunch of son of a bitches that don't look like the gentleman on the camera today. JJ doesn't look like anybody I saw when I was in Calgary. Mm-hmm. What do you think, JJ? Yeah, there's uh, there's getting to be more and more that don't really look like us, like I said before, but... Uh... It's, it's, it's tough being here, especially out in the West where we don't have much of a say. There's too many people as you go East that are, don't have the same mindset as they were down in the West. The, the farmer in the Canadian provinces is no different than the co- farmer in North Dakota. Good, hardworking people that enjoy the outdoors, loves God and everything else. And it's just crazy that that's happened that way. So tell me about being a Canadian. You big hockey fan? Yeah. I used to play a lot of hockey when I was younger, but as I got older, I never really watched it or anything. But it's still, you get the Battle of, of Alberta, which is uh, Calgary and Edmonton, and that's only an hour south and an hour north of us. So that's good. pretty good rivalry, and it's pretty fun to watch those games. But once it starts getting down the playoffs, you start watching more. we got local hockey that's pretty good, Junior A and stuff like that. So hockey is a big part. I just don't watch it much on TV. That's one thing I'm jealous about the Canadians. They have something to do until the summertime. Mm-hmm. They can watch hockey. I mean, I could watch it here. I just don't understand the game. I mean, it's pretty straightforward once you get it. Once you get the rhythm of it, isn't it? Yeah, you're just trying to put the little black thing into the net. Yeah, that, I mean, that part. That, it, right? that part I get. I don't understand the icing calls and you get offsides and all that. You'll figure it out. You figured football out. Figured baseball out. Football's got to be the hardest sport for someone that don't understand it to start the scoring watching. Scoring is wonky. Scoring makes no sense for somebody that just plucked out of the sky and is like, hey, watch this. You get six points for this. You get one for that. You get three for that. You get two for that. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So, like with that, actually, it's, uh, we in high school, we got our football team back. Like for, I think it was around 20 years, we lost our football team. When I was in grade 10, we finally got it back. And our first game that we won, we won it one nothing. <laughs> by punting it through the end zone. No shit. I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't either. <laughs> well, that could be the Canadian rules over the NFL or whatever. But... I'll be damned. Now punted it out of the end zone, and that's where the point. Yeah, you got a safety. Oh wow, that's awesome. I didn't know that was a thing, but I, I don't know much about Canadian football either. Do uh, did you grow up in a small town then? Yeah, the town I grew up in is in Saskatchewan, about twenty five hundred people. Perfect that's size, bigger town. than what we have. That's a perfect size town there. Yeah, for sure. It was just enough you can get yourself in trouble, and pretty much everybody knew about it. <laughs> so, did you you grow up hunting and ice fishing all the time? Uh, ice fishing didn't come till much later in life, but hunting and 
like waterfowl and deer hunting was pretty big growing up. Like I think I was in my my dad and his friends blind probably at age eight, being the bird dog, and I loved every minute of it. Now, is it all? I mean, is it where you were growing up? Is it a, a big uh, migration stop, or is all the is the whole province pretty much just sky to sky waterfowl? Uh, I wouldn't say the whole province, but you like my my hometown of Unity is right in the flyway. Like it's, we go back still every fall for a week or so and it's like it's amazing like it's just ridiculous how many birds there are did, did your folks stick around there uh mom passed away six years ago and dad's still there so he he gets some a bunch of 40 year old men barding on his house when every fall so <laughs> he probably <laughs> loves, loves it, every though. minute of it he probably loves it <laughs> loves having everybody there oh yeah yeah and y'all are there for a week Usually a week, yeah. Usually we'll go down on a Monday and then hunt till Saturday, Sunday. Are the I assume that in the last couple of years, the bombardment after COVID has really taken place on the Canadian prairies with the Americans coming up there. Does it ever get to be an issue? I, I assume you can hunt pretty much anywhere you want to around your hometown. Or have y'all been pushed out by the American outfitters? No, there's a few outfitters around there, and they're actually – they're pretty awesome to deal with. Like if you're sitting on a field scouting it the night before, they'll come up and they'll chat with you. And are you taking this one? Well, maybe. Is it okay? Well, we're going to go back over here a few miles. And they're pretty good to deal with. We've had one bad incident, but I think it's with anything you do, there's going to be some uh, hindrance or whatever you want to call it that's going to kind of put a, a staple in your feather. I assume eventually but, money's going to rule up there where they're going to start leasing land. I'm sure a lot of farmers do lease land under the covers that nobody knows about with cash. Uh, they do do it, yeah. And they've, we've actually were told about it this fall by both ways. And it's a little bit, like, I get why they're doing it, but it's kind of frustrating on our end. But what do you do? Go to the next field and shoot them up over there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, it's not like it's not like there's one field that has all the birds. Like, you can go any direction from the from the small town and find a hunt within 15 20 minutes pretty easy and it's multiple in each direction it's crazy but people don't i mean when when you go up there and hunt and you see all the birds and how spread out they are it's an amazing deal because that's where they're all nesting they're oh, all yeah. there they're, they're, and they are spread out it's so different than down in the states and the lack of pressure we hunted in what we hunted five days in canada this this year I didn't hear nobody else shoot anywhere, did you? I heard a couple of the volleys. You yeah. did? We're at what place? The, in Saskatchewan. In Saskatchewan. I didn't hear nobody else. But the, but we, you just didn't see. Yeah, I do too remember that. We did have that first morning. But you don't see a lot of hunters for the birds that are there. And I know in some areas it's a lot more, uh, I guess, I don't know what the word I would look for, a uh, tr- lot more traffic with, with the hunters in, that, in some of them certain areas. But and I always wondered how the Canadian actually the actual guy in Canada that hunts how he felt about all of that. If they felt bombarded or they're good with it. Um, I think it's like like you said, there's lots of birds, there's lots of area. So and if you're especially like a local guy like me that had moved away and you still know a lot of people back home, it's definitely not hard to get permission. Like we got landowners that they'll watch us hunt in the morning and if they go over a mile to the east or whatever and that's their field You'll call them that evening, and they go, oh, yeah, somebody called, but I kept it for you. Huh. Like, it's pretty pretty good people around there for sure. Now, do you hunt in your hometown you live in now a lot, or do you still go back home to where you're from to hunt mostly? Uh, we do most of our hunting around here, like within an hour of Black Falls. Like, we'll go west and then east out towards Bashaw. Lots of birds in Bashaw, too, but not like Saskatchewan. It's hard to explain. Like, in Saskatchewan, you can, you can find – multiple feeds of like 10,000 birds and you can do that too in like around Stetler but in Saskatchewan there'll be four 10,000 feeds in each direction and and here in Alberta there'll be one or two in an area so it's just a little bit better flyway I think in unity. so as far as I mean it sounds like there's more birds in Saskatchewan but as far as quality hunting is it uh is it not even close from Alberta to Saskatchewan no, I think Alberta's good too. Like you still get them good hunts, and if you put in your your legwork and do the scouting and good to the landowners, and they're happy to let you out there and stuff, then it's good. Yeah. 
How but, how far are you from the um, Rockies? From the mountains? Two hours, a little over two hours, maybe. Like we're about an hour from Calgary, then about an hour to Banff. How far, where, where the guy that we had on that got bit by the bear? He had to be somewhere close to that. I don't remember. Yeah, he's kind of in between. He was from Sundry. Yes, I think. that's right. Yeah, yeah, he's about uh, forty minutes, and then just a little bit west of Highway. Yeah, I see two. it right there now. Where he, it's, it's between you and Calgary, where he is at. So do you see a lot of bears while you're hunting? No. No, we're all, like all my deer hunting we do here is all prairie farmland. And I haven't seen any in the prairies or nothing. We see some out working when we're working. But well, Me and Andy, about 10 years ago, we went to Carrot River, Tobin Lake area. And I was just so impressed because we saw bears, we saw wolves, we saw mule deer, whitetail deer, elk, moose, everything. Just on an afternoon scouting. And I enjoyed that more than I did the hunting and seeing all the different game. Do you have all of that where you're at? Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the second whitetail there was shot just uh, 15 minutes west. And then two, three years ago, I shot my first bull moose, which was 20 minutes east of town. And we got elk that run the Red Deer River and just a little bit south of us. So you got everything there. Might not see many wolves. There'd be some down by the river, but so you got elk, moose, deer. You got it all. Yep. The uh, two two years ago, we went out September first, opening morning, for Canada's and ducks, and we got a three man limit of honkers, and then we went out to the lake, and then we got a limit of walleye in the afternoon. <laughs> It was pretty awesome. <laughs> Living in true God's country, except yeah. for during the winter time. Sportsman's paradise. I couldn't handle the winters. Yeah. No. no. Well, you would like this winter, Jeff. It's been pretty tame. I think we've had two weeks where it's below minus twenty <laughs> Celsius. Yeah. So two weeks. Two weeks. Like it's fourteen days of that shit. I couldn't handle that. <laughs> uh, uh, there's no way. I don't mind. I don't mind for it. some you cold. Dress for it. But that's 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 cold, 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 cold. But it is an yeah, awesome can. place up there. It's so beautiful to see it. Now Americans can't come up there and shoot moose, can they? They have to. That's only Canadian residents only, right? I think they have to go through an outfitter. Like they can't freelance for big game. I knew where we for Saskatchewan and Alberta. Okay, you have to be with an outfitter then. I think yeah. that eventually it's going to come to that for the all hunting in Canada. I really believe so. I, I keep saying this, and people, I get messages all the time. You, you you don't know what you're talking about. That's true. There's a lot of things I say I don't know shit about. I agree with that. I think eventually you're going to see Canada cut off all Americans coming and bringing guns over there. If you're going to go to Canada hunt, you're going to have to hunt with an outfitter, and you're going to have to get guns that an outfitter has, like in Mexico. If we keep our current government, I could see that. But like a real government that's actually here for Canadians knows that the Americans bring a lot of money into those small towns. Like, so it'd be, wouldn't be that great if that happened, because if you go to an outfitter, usually you're all out in the, uh, uh, what do the heck they call them? You know, like their lodges and all that mm -hmm. stuff. There's not a lot of money right. going to those small communities. Yeah, that, that's true. I don't think that the government, it's kind of like of America. We don't have a government that gives a shit about us. I don't know why y'all's government would give a shit about y'all. We'd have to all live in fantasy land have a government that actually cared about us but i really see it trending that way it's getting harder and harder to come across the border unless you're wading across in texas and you're getting a check <laughs> but you just it's so hard going to canada as an american we didn't have to deal with guns because we had guns we could yeah, thank use goodness but it's such a pain in the ass yeah and then i have guys that go across that they're like i'm just there five minutes it was perfect and then you have the other guy like mikey who got kicked back out this year <laughs> But I mean, he was going up there to guide, though, right? Yeah, but I mean, didn't it's have just, his papers. But you see, it just, there's more and more of that going on. Mm -hmm. Guys that have a lot, they get harassed a lot of the government that the borders. It's just stupid. Just make it really hard because the the Canadian, the people in those small towns, they need the American dollar. Yeah, for sure. Like it's all the tourism, and it's not. It's a small town, Saskatchewan. They don't have a lot of tourism, like especially like Unity. They got a couple of motels there, and when we're there, usually eight, end of September, early October, you see a lot of uh, U.S. plates in there, and they're, you know, eating at the restaurants and buying liquor at the liquor store or going to my cannabis store there, and they 
they they feed the community while they're there. That's yeah, kind of like well, we live in a small town that has zero tourism other than waterfowl season. From hunting season on, whether it's deer hunting, waterfowl, pigs, whatever, from September through about February or March, we have people here all the time that are spending money in our communities that are hunters. Whether they're hunting with me or somebody else, they're they're here spending money, and our communities need that. And the yep. business owners appreciate it, but a lot of people don't. They probably oh, they're out here. We can't get nowhere to hunt ourselves anymore. Well, that's that's part of life. That's the way it goes. When are y'all snow? When y'all start snow goose hunting again here pretty quick, won't y'all? It's already open on the fifteenth. We're just waiting for them to come. They're in Nebraska. Are okay. they? Yeah. Well, I, I I say they are. I don't know. Blake is still snow goose hunting, so he says tens of thousands right outside of his shop. He's got a permanent spread uh, right outside of town, so he just hops in there a couple hours every morning and grinds on them a little bit, and then hops on a tractor using backboards. I bet, huh? <laughs> uh, probably our A frame. Our A frame. Yeah. Okay. No, they are our A frame. They hundred percent. I thought he had our backboards too. He's got some of them. Okay. Yeah. Blake's like the son that I love that borrows shit that never brings it back. I'm glad he lives further away because we wouldn't have anything if he lived close. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. didn't yeah. South Dakota get hit by a big snowstorm? Uh, I'm not sure. I think I thought I saw where South Dakota and North Dakota got pummeled by snow the other day. A bunch of big snow. When do the snow geese usually show up for you? Um, usually beginning of April. And then they usually last about a month. I can't month imagine goose hunting clear up until May. That is crazy. Now, they get really stupid, too, in April and May, I was told. Yeah, there's, it's something about the breeding, because they breed on the way up north. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, the guys don't so give a like shit. it's like a bunch of college kids looking for some poontang on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> Bang all the way home, they get home, they fucking don't give a shit, and they just decoy right in. I didn't know that. I thought they'd yep. wait until they got back to wherever, Tundra or whatever, and then do it there. No. I did not I know I heard that. it's on the way up. Yeah, I think that that's just the nesting grounds. That's interesting. Huh? Because they they're gonna start having if if they're if if it's the end of right. April first of May, fuck they're gonna have eggs yeah. eggs on a clutch and have babies by June. Yeah, pr probably pretty close. Yeah, so they can start their flight down to get shot the shit out of them again. Now we all y'all use electric collars in the spring, right? Yeah, we can use them just for snow geese. Now see, we hunted like, we we hunted up there in September and they used or October and they were using the collars, and I was I didn't know you could do that. What's your makes yeah, it nice? Yeah, you can use a, an e-collar with a snow goose sound, and then if anything comes in, you can hammer it. But if, it used to be if a Canada came into an e-collar, e you weren't allowed to shoot it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I'll be damned. I didn't know that either. There's a lot I don't know, but, you know, that's why we're with a guide. He's He's got to know. <laughs> he's got. Hopefully he knows. He, yeah, hopefully, <laughs> he, you know, tell me I can shoot it or not. We don't have that many snow geese here, but you could do the e-collar snows here and, and run it and shoot specs all day long. You could, but it's illegal. Well, I understand. I'm talking about if it was legal. Oh. I don't understand why it's legal there in the fall, but not down here. I don't know. Same reason they can shoot eight pintail hens. So are y'all... Isn't it eight? Isn't it eight ducks? Yeah. Eight ducks, eight darks, and 50 snows. Yeah. Whew. So in the spring, but in the spring, it's unlimited on snow geese, right? Are y'all at 50? Uh, it's still 50 a day with no possession limit. Fuck, 50 geese, though. Jeez, you shoot 50 geese. That's a hell of a... Four hey, guys kill 200 birds. What's the most snows you've ever got in a day? 120. How many guys? Two? Uh, <laughs> six. Six guys. That's still a yeah. lot of birds to clean. It doesn't take too bad. You all get your six or ten or whatever. And then we did a lot of sausage with it. Mm -hmm. And man, did that turn out good. It did? Yeah, we just made 160 pounds of sausage. Damn. Ooh. I don't, I don't, I don't like goose that much. My, my thought since COVID, the goose taste is not as bad as it used to be. It used to be like a really bad liver. Now it's just not beef, but it's not as bad for me no more. But I like goose sausage. I love the cheese jalapeno and the goose sausage is very good. Yeah. The trick with it is you got to make it taste not like goose. That's exactly right. You get it to taste like a deer and it's money. Spice is important. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get it to taste like chorizo or something. Yeah. Yeah, all pork fat and jalapenos is what you want to taste. But there's a lot of sausage made out of duck and goose these days. Oh, yeah. It's the easiest thing to do with it, right? And jalapeno poppers. That's probably one of my second. Jalapeno poppers. That's probably my favorite. With, how, how do you do them? With the snow geese? Uh, ducks. Ducks, yeah. Duck poppers, yeah. Hollow out the jalapeno and then fill with cream cheese, marinated duck breast and Italian salad dressing. Wrap it in bacon, throw on the pit boss. 
and then my mouth starts watering about three minutes. <laughs> so you, it you, take you, long. you hollow out the jalapenos where we slice the jalapenos here, like lengthwise. So y'all just open them up and you make them like a vessel and you put the cream cheese inside of it. No, we cut it in half and then haul, then take out all the seeds. Okay, yeah, the, My wife doesn't like it too spicy, so right. it's easier to make them all for her than a couple for me, and then I lose one and she gets it. <laughs> <laughs> you know you can use bell pepper. It's the same thing then. No. doesn't taste as good. No. Totally different, totally different yeah. flavor. That's like drinking a near beer and having a beer. <laughs> Two different things. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, a jalapeno that's not hot is a damn bell pepper no, to me. No, it's not. Not even close. Totally different flavor profiles. You don't know what you're talking yeah. about there. Okay. Then you get that. You, I love it when you get that right amount of heat, like not too hot. Like you want to feel it just a little bit, but you don't want it to scald your ass. Yeah. You don't want to melt your face off. It's the flavor and a little bit of heat. Yes. Yes. I didn't realize. So I love jalapeno poppers. There's like a vein in there and you got to scrape just a little bit of that vein out. Like a lot of times people will just remove the seeds and they're like, fuck this pepper's still hot. I got all the seeds out. There's a tiny vein in there. And you see it whenever you cut it open. If you just barely scrape some of that out, I've noticed I get, I kind of moderate the uh, amount of heat that's hitting me. Yep. 100%. I do love a good jalapeno popper, though. I can eat my weight in them. If they're at, like, a, I, think they're, I think they're the ultimate dish. If they're at, like, a potluck or something like that, the first thing I go for. Load my plate up first, then go back for the shitty roast that people brought. You know the f best fast food <laughs> jalapeno popper is at Sonic. Probably. The, the, the Sonic has the best poppers. Do they? Do y'all? Do y'all have Sonic in Canada? Or y'all got Tim Not Hortons? Yet. And, I think they're coming. A and W. Yeah. A and W. Yeah. With no ice. Yeah. Mm. No ice. That wears me out. I everywhere yeah. I go, I want lots of ice in my drink, and I guess I say ice funny because I get made fun of it all the time. But we were up there and I ordered a root beer at A and W, and they bring me a root beer, right just a root glass beer. of root beer. It's like, do y'all have yeah. ice? Oh, we don't have a machine even. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> it's cold here all the time. We don't need ice on our drinks. You're taking that restaurant for more money because they're giving you more soda this way. I'd rather have ice. Mm. Half a glass of ice, is, half the root beer. Yeah, for sure. Is Sonic the one where they come out on the roller skates? Yeah, they that was their initial pitch, and then they got lazy and just started walking to you. There's some places, some that places have, they'll still bring out rollerblades. Let, let me tell you a story. We were in Hobart, Oklahoma at Sonic, and they had a girl that brung the rollerblades out there. And she dropped all the shit, and Andy was an asshole and laughed at her. I did. Andy doesn't tip, and he made fun of her for busting her ass in front of everybody. And I felt really bad. But, yeah, they used to do roller skates, but you don't see much. But, yeah, that's a Sonic. And they have uh, – I'm sure regionally it's completely different, but they sell a lot of uh, – they've got fried pickles, and they've got fried jalapeno poppers that I bought and like, and they got uh, something else, a like Cheddar Bites or something. Mm-hmm. Speaking of ice, did have you do you know how on the rocks got started? You know how the saying originated? Mm -mm. Do you know? No. So the Scots, the Scottish people, when they were drinking their whiskey, they didn't have ice back in the day. They would go to the river or outside, and the rocks were always cold, so they'd put rocks in their whiskey to cool it off. I'll be damned. That's, that's how Scotch on the rocks got started. That's an interesting, interesting tidbit. So you like ice. Imagine, you know, 300 years ago, you'd have been putting fucking rocks in your drink. <laughs> I don't know about all that, but that, that's that's very interesting, though. That's how it happened. It's interesting. You're deal. welcome. There, there's your history lesson so, for the day. So as a Canadian, are you a big poutine eater? Twice a year, maybe. And it all depends on the restaurant. That's it. What's the key for you on your poutine? Um, There's one, we have a, a camp spot just out by just west of town out of Gall Lake. And there used to be, well, it just burnt down this winter actually called the monkey top. The and they had top. a, uh, a poutine with uh, prime rib or not prime rib brisket. In Jeez. It. And that was, and that was pretty good. Sounds like it. I'd be all over that one. I had lobster yeah. poutine in, um, Kenny Bunkport, Maine. I couldn't, I couldn't remember where we were at in Kenny Bunkport, Maine this year. And it was, it had crab in it, or no, lobster. It had lobster in it. It was lobster. It, it was good, but they had lobster instead of cheese curd. It was lobster with cheese curds, fries, and, and some kind of gravy. Must have been a white gravy. It was, and it, but it was, it was, like but it was garlicky like a, butter. Yeah, it was more like a butter sauce than it was a gravy because we have good white gravy here. 
and it, it wasn't that Yankee brown gravy. It was, but it was, but it was, it was a cream sauce kind of a, a garlic butter cream sauce. But it was really pretty good, I, and I'd never had it. But it was, it was called Main Poutine, I believe, is what it was. But it was really good. It was di- very different. But we had poutine last year in Ontario, and it was a whole lot better than what we had in Winnipeg at the airport. Yeah, that's for sure. The further you go east, the more the better the poutine will that's be. What they said. They said it yeah. originated somewhere out east, and you know, yeah. it just kind of went west after that. But they said the further yeah. east in Canada you go, the better the poutine is. We flew into Montreal last year, and we had one right at the airport, and it was pretty good. And it was a real poutine. Pretty good. So a guy in Canada like yourself, do you do you work all winter long, or do you get off in the winter when it's so cold? I work all year long. Oof. <laughs> yeah, I work in the oil field. So I work... Uh, 15 and 6 running a wireline truck for a voltage wireline. Those so you you're on 15 and off 6. Yep. That's Ooh. good for hunting though, isn't it? You betcha. Do your 2 weeks yep. and then you got about a week off. Yep. I'm betting you take your vacation during hunting season also, don't you? Uh depends depending on the year. If I'm coming up for a draw or something, then I'll take an extra holiday here. And I always take an extra week in September to go or October to go back to Saskatchewan. Do you, will they let you do like 30 and 12 or can, can you not do that? No, they don't like it. Cause you can't technically not supposed to work over 23 days straight, Uh-oh. but they've done it, but we've done it before, but right. it's not fun. How is the oil business in Canada right now? Are y'all busy as y'all want to be? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's busy. It's all about abandonments right now. There's some new production, but like what we do is a lot to do with all abandonments. We specialize in abandonments. I saw where oil was $80 a barrel still. What is it? What does it mean? Abandonments? That's you take over a, a dead well or what? That's when they're getting rid of the well when the well is depleted. So there could be problems with the well, or we'll run our tools down there, and we can use a set of bridge plug with explosives to set a plug and it blocks the well off from there down. Then they'll pressure test it. Then we'll dump cement, and then if they if they have casing issues or a casing vent flow leak, we can do different types of logging. And we can tell them where their cement is on the back side of the casing. And then we can run a gun in and use more explosives, put holes in the casing, set another plug called a cement retainer. And then they'll do a cement job trying to get the, the vent flow fixed. So you get to play with explosives. Yeah. My, not like, I don't ever get to see them. Hopefully I don't ever see them go off. But down hole they go off. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a hell of a day. You just go out there and blow shit up and pour cement on it. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> there, uh, I saw oils at eighty-two dollars a barrel today. Really? Yeah. Have y'all? Uh, I, I know that that area is huge on oil and stuff. Y'all do a lot of fracking where you're at, then. Yeah, yeah. There's fracking. That's that black sand oil, isn't it up there? Uh, no, that's in northern Alberta. That's like Fort Mac, where they got the oil sands. I don't understand how that works. I've never understood that. They have to melt the sand. Yeah, they, they pretty much they separate the sand and the oil, and then they then they clean up the sand, put it back, and then they ship out the oil. It's amazing how smart people are. How the hell did they figure that out? Just got too hot. Sand got sand started melting, and they're like, "Oh fuck, there's oil." I guess so. All right. Can you now, imagine how lucky that is. I mean, oh my sand turns to oil. Now I'm a millionaire. Oh my dirty sand! Yeah, Ew, gross. yeah. Let's, <laughs> never have that happen. Do, uh, is a lot of the oil in in Canada? A lot of that land is that all native land or whatever you call them? Natural Amer- uh, India? I don't, what the hell do you call Indians up there? Are they Native Americans or they have a name for them? Don't they? Yeah, natives. Uh, no, like up there, it might be a lot of native land or like government land, but down here, like down here where we are in central, it's all. Majority would be farm owners land. And then once you go west of here, like towards BC, and then some of it turns into crown land, government land again. Crown land. That's Queensland. The Kings. Or the Kings. They own, yeah. the royal family owns a bunch of land in Canada still, don't they? I'm not sure. I think they do. At one time they did. My question is, do you, in Texas, now we've had oil for a long time down here. You don't see it as much, but I noticed in North Dakota and South Dakota, and even in Western Oklahoma, you'd see it. You see an old family farm and you see grandma and grandpa's house. And it's a little farmhouse. And then you see 
the mom and dad's house is a little nicer than the grandkids' house since they've cashed in on this oil. They live like fucking millionaires. Is that the way it is up where y'all are too? There's a few spots like that, yeah, where they have like kind of a three-yard farmyard and each house will, will go up higher in size and and value. Yeah, the grandkids live in a whole lot better than the grandparents did. There ain't no doubt about that shit. Would you, yeah. would you like to guess at how much land in Canada the Crown owns? 26%. <clears throat> JJ? 33%. 89%. No shit. 89. It's owned oh. by the royal family of Can- 89% is long. The vast majority of all lands in Canada are held by governments as public land and are known as crown lands. About 89% of Canada's land is crown land. Is the crown land owned by the the British monarchy or is it owned by the people of Canada? Um, Who's not? And I bet you're not getting a check for it, are you, JJ? It just says Crown Land. I don't know if that. They said it's in the mail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hope y'all's mail service is better than ours because ours is terrible nowadays. <laughs> but yeah, I typed how much land in Canada does the royal family own? It popped out eighty nine percent. Sure, that can't be that can't be right. That can't all be going to the royal uh, family. I don't know about that. They've owned land all over the place. Forty one percent is federal Crown Land. Forty eight is. 48% is provincial crown land. The remaining 11 is privately owned. That's got to just be what they call it. And, but I don't know why I didn't, I didn't put in crown in my Google search. I don't know. But if you go, I'm going like to do some more west digging. Of, if you go west of where the uh, bear attack guy was from sundry there, yeah. like that's all crown land all the way to pretty, pretty much BC. Hmm. So it's quite a bit of land. And then if you go north, like you hit a certain spot and all that's crown land. So it's quite a bit. Hmm. I'm just curious if the crown land is owned by the actual British monarchy. Everything I keep, every, everything I, I click on it, it all goes back to Queen Elizabeth. That's, that's why I've, I've, I'd always heard that, but that's just, so 90% basically of Canada is still under the throne. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, here we go. Hold on. Crown land is owned by the Canadian crown. Okay. The monarchy owns all crown land officially, so I mean, maybe not. I know that I know in England that they give it they they pay the royal family fifty to one hundred fifty million dollars a year every year as a tax. They pay to the monarchy, and I'm wondering if that doesn't include money that the Canadian government is sending the British government. I'm, I'm digging here. I'm digging. You're the Canadian. You should I'm have swimming. all these answers. We can tell you what's going I don't on have in the Texas. Answers. I just know that we can go on. Like we can go on and on. And we can fish on it. We can do whatever we want. Yeah. But. The state of Texas ain't giving us any of them options. I can guarantee you. No. Not we live one. in a state that has one percent that of public hunting. In the whole entire state of Texas, there's very little public hunting. And if you took off the coastline of Texas, it would probably be way, 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 way small. Because that's basically all the public hunting in Texas is either going to be in a lake or on a, on the on the Gulf Coast. You find very few places that are set aside for for hunting in the state of Texas. Yeah, well, a lot of them they're not definitely they're not designated just for hunting. Like there's an area east of Black Falls, about 20, 25 minutes, and it's one full section, so a mile by mile, and it's crown land, but it's grazing property. So through the summer, the farmer that has the lease on it will have his cattle out there. And then mid-October, he'll get his cattle out of there. Then November 1st, it's it's a highway for people to drive through and see if they can catch any deer or moose going through there. What uh, Do y'all have the big white barns where they have all the carpenter bees or wood bees or whatever they're called? Like you see in some... The white white. They have little white huts. Like I saw some like bee houses, bee houses yeah. yes, the bigger ones though. They oh yeah, there's lots of farmers that have them around, and that keeps the gives the yeah. bees a place to stay in the winter time so they don't all die. Yeah, and then they'll wrap them up and insulate them for them and everything. This They're, can't be fun. actually one of my daughter's friends from school. They live out by um, St. Paul, and they're like one of the biggest bee like honey producers. Kind of neat. That is inter- that's an interesting animal that we don't or insect. If it wasn't for the bees, we wouldn't even be here still. Yeah. They're alive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I listened to that podcast you guys had with the with the beekeeper, and that was pretty cool. Well, like if the bees go away, so does civilization. Like we're fucked if there's no more bees. 
And people don't, yeah. and nobody's talking. There's a couple of things nobody's talking about. Nobody's talking about where the bees are going, and nobody's talking uh, about well here in America, uh, our national debt. Not nobody's talking about it. Not a single politician. <laughs> two two very very frightening things, and it's like ah fuck it, we're good. Let it ride. Let's get to five hundred trillion. The tipping point, as I like to call it. We'll never. They'll, they'll never ever address. Or is it that. fifty trillion? They'll never. I think it's fifty it, trillion. Fifty five hundred. What's it matter? I mean, we're never going to address that anyways. The bee situation is interesting because the almond farms in California have played a big role in a lot of that because there's a lot of there, there there's a lot of manipulation by other beekeepers against other beekeepers. It's a cutthroat business. Yeah. But you have to have them to survive. I mean, I would pollinate everything. The other day I was driving down the road and I saw an 18 wheeler that had a hives loaded on deal and they had like a, a screen wire around them and you could see the bees buzzing around and stuff and they were going somewhere else to drop those bees off. Right. And they, and they 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 sell them out to these farms or they rent them out all the time. But it's always interesting when I'm in Canada I see those bee houses everywhere. Not like the hives we have here for people to understand. It's like a little Actually, looks like a kid's playhouse you'd see in the backyard, and it's white. Okay, so I might have an answer to this. Who owns is what's Crown Land? This is according to Cora, and this is so people with the knowledge of it they type in their answer. The answer is sort of. It depends on how, whatever you want to be about it. The Queen of England holds a legal title to all the Crown Lands that makes up eighty nine percent of Canada currently. Uh, Elizabeth is both queen of the UK and queen of Canada, but those are separate positions and could diverge in the future. So Elizabeth, who is a queen of the UK has title to 89% of Canada, but she owns it because she is also the queen of Canada. This is an older thing. The ownership has nothing to do with the title queen of the UK. She's just a land bearer for the that. The idea of owning that land is tricky, too. Canada inherited much of its legal traditions from the U.K., and U.K. evolved for a long time without the concept of a corporation. In the U.S., for example, the government is a corporation, a legal person that can own property, enter into contracts, sue, and be sued, etc. In Canada, in U.K. and Canada, etc., the government cannot do those things. Only a natural person can. So the legal formula that is followed is that the monarch owns all the government property, the monarch enters into contracts, and the monarch can sue or be sued. The government does all those things as the queen's agent. So I think technically, yes, the crown does. I'm now, a, I'm gonna, that's, that's my final answer. Can you imagine what her royalty checks must be on wool? I think that would go to the Canadian government on that one. <laughs> I don't know. Sounds like she is the Canadian government. I don't know how it all works out. It's a weird. It's a weird system because she's on y'all's legal tender, isn't she? Yeah. What a whoa. well. Then they switched it just recently. But then if he's not doing so good, they might have to switch. It oh, again. he's already on the on on your dollars. There was some yeah because you don't get the new new stuff right away. Right. Like I think the the newest one I've seen is 2022. I've been looking for it, but haven't seen him on there That's yet. Well, if he if he died. He damn be. sure didn't get to use that office very much. No. He's <laughs> like, she lived forever. She, she, anyways. She, she screwed him on any sort of... Fuck, she was she was queen during World War II. Can, could she have stepped down? I or just, is it a death thing? I don't thing? know. No, I think they can. I No, because her uncle... She would not even have been the queen. Her uncle was supposed to be king. Right. But he was banging some divorced American chick and right. married her. So he had to excommunicate. Is that what it's called? I... That is a thing. I don't know if that's what they call it. He had to excommunicate, I think, is actually what you call it. And he walked away from the... And her dad became... And it went to her dad. And her her uncle was also a na Nazi sympathizer. And so was her husband, because he was a German. So was Hugo Boss. Yeah, Hugo Boss is big-time German sympathizers. They made all their uniforms. Uh -huh. And anyways, the... Uh, so I, I don't know how that works exactly. I don't even know who the new king is going to be. William. Okay. And his wife's the one that's missing right now, right? Eh, they found her. Did they? She turns up. I don't think so. See, that's what I mean. Who, but I don't understand all the mystery with all this shit. It's the same as any celebrity. That's the same as anything. I mean, why? who gives a shit about Kim Kardashian? Millions of people apparently do. But it, they're just a celebrity. That's all that they are. That's what it is. No, no. different. They're no different than any other Kurt Russell or anybody. 
Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a question. So hunting was slow one day. We were sitting there in the blind. And, uh, you know, I'm just begging for a bird to do it. And off to my left, I, I hear somebody say, talking to somebody, talking to one of their buddies in the blind. I've been quiet for a while. So what's your favorite Kurt Russell movie? <laughs> Jesus, boys, it's about time for us to fucking end it here. <laughs> what is your favorite Kurt Russell movie? <laughs> it's a good question, but it's just like, to, that's the question that breaks the silence is, hey, what's your favorite Kurt Russell movie? Uh, my favorite <laughs> Kurt Russell movie, um, Backdraft's really good, Tombstone. Uh, he's, had a, he's, had, he's had some good ones. Um, I couldn't watch Backdraft. I'm going to say Tombstone. Tombstone, final answer. I couldn't do Backdraft because my dad picked it apart the whole time. Yeah. As that a fireman. Sense. Why damn you can't talk in there? He ain't got no face mask on. It smokes in there. Well, blah, blah. I was yeah, like, okay. Yeah, my favorite Kurt Russell movie is probably the one with Robin Williams when they go back to their high school reunion and play football. I've never seen that remember one. the name of it. The right stuff or some shit. What's your favorite Kurt Russell movie? Or do you have one? I don't even have one. There you one. go. I Sam, the same way, too. Mel Gibson will be a whole lot easier. What would that be? Oh, uh, the one where he plays the Patriot. The Patriot? Yeah, the Patriot. I couldn't remember. That. I love that movie. <laughs> couldn't think of the word. Yeah. Couldn't think of the name of it. The Patriot. Patriot. Great movie. Um, I would go Mel Gibson. Yeah. Lethal Weapon 4. I liked all the Lethal Weapon with, with movies. Joe though. Pesci. What? what uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. So, Kurt Russell. Let's see. Captain Ron was good. Overboard was good. Uh, Tombstone. I didn't like Escape from New York. Uh, and then that's the 70s. Um. Mm, yeah, I think that's probably about it. Bone Tomahawk I never saw. Uh, Hateful Eight was good. <clears throat> Is he Kate Hudson's dad? Uh, I think stepdad. I don't think it's a biological dad. Okay. Married to Goldie Hawn, or not married to Goldie Hawn, but he's been banging her for been 40 together years. forever. Um All the all the eighties movies were the same. Huh? Yeah, you got the buddy cop and like how much shit can you possibly get into? I don't know. I think all movies are that way. Yeah, lethal weapon. Like how many times are they gonna do this with Riggs and Martin? I think they're no they're Martin done Riggs. now. They're all dead now. They made eighty of them. Oh. Who's your favorite actor, JJ? Adam oh, Sandler. he's a good one. You what's know, your, I just what's watched your his, his new show the other day. Uh, what was the name of that thing? I just watched it with David Spade. The Wrong Missy. Hey, did you see oh, that? Yeah. God. Yeah, every time you watch it, God. you miss something. It gets I funny, laugh so funny. fucking hard. And that's on Netflix? Yeah, when that lady goes in that bar, and yeah. he's hitting the, he's trying to pick up that football, that big son of a bitch's wife. God, that's great. Yeah. My boyfriend <laughs> will kick your ass. <laughs> it's a good yeah. Or how about when she does the uh, the cliff diving and then yes. slips and like cartwheels down that cliff? <laughs> that is a funny ass show. That's one of the. I like Adam Sandler. He seems like a good dude. I like him because he's very loyal to his friends. Yeah, that's pretty and, cool. And you just yeah. don't see a lot of that anymore. But that that the wrong Missy is a good well, show. What's your favorite Adam Sandler? Kind of neat movie? how he's starting to involve his daughters now yeah. too. What's your favorite Adam Sandler movie? I think probably Waterboy. Waterboy's good. Waterboy's good. Um, I sure like the first Grown Ups. Mm -hmm. I really, yeah, I really Very liked good. it. Um, Big Daddy's good. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I wipe my, own, wipe my ass. own ass. Yeah, it was sad though. <laughs> Did you know Rob Schneider's daughter is a famous uh, singer now? She's that chick that sings "I'm Drunk and I Just Want to Go Home" or whatever it is. She's yeah. the one that was at. at uh, Dolly Parton at the uh, Dolly Parton's 150th birthday or whatever the hell that they had at Nashville the other day, and she got drunk. She got on stage and she was really drunk, but she's a very good oh. singer. Hmm. What's her name? Does it show her right now? L King. Song I've L King. Yes, that's his daughter. Really? Yeah, she's very talented too. Not much of a looker, but well, he's not much of a looker. He, he had one ugly daughter and two good, uh, two pretty daughters. We saw that in Grown Ups. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm drunk and I don't want to go home. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. I didn't. Your mother told me that going to Nashville or something. Or I, we were in Nashville and she said something about it. So I wonder why she didn't want to keep her. Uh, oh, her mom is London King. I don't even know who London King is. I don't either, but I don't know why you wouldn't want to be L. Schneider. London doesn't, doesn't have the same uh, stage presence. She's got her dad's money, and Linda L. King sounds a little bit better. Here comes L. Schneider. Welcome yeah. her to the stage. She's a very good singer, though. <laughs> she is. Yeah, I like that song. Very, very good singer. But anyways, yeah, that's his daughter. 
So what's uh, what's coming up next? You're going to start snow goose hunting whenever they show up, and then uh, you do any turkey hunting up there? No, there's no. There's actually a draw for turkeys, and I think it's like seven draws for the whole province of oh, Alberta. Oh, Friday. Yeah, so through the winter, just been kind of keep myself going with Delta stuff, and we just actually put out uh, nine, ten hen houses yesterday, or Saturday, sorry. And then this afternoon, I'm going to go out to small town that's got a youth group, and they want to learn about them and put one out with me. So we're going that's to go awesome. do that. Doing wood duck boxes? No, hen houses. Oh. What's what? What is it? What's the hen house? Hen house is like a. It's a thicker um, chicken uh-huh. wire with straw built into the middle of it, and then you put some hay in the middle, and you put it out in the pond to keep them out of the water. Or out of the grass to nest. I've seen the them nest. before, but I've never seen one in person. How many can just one hen get in there? Or how big? Are how big are these things? They're thirty inches long, so you might be able to get two. I don't know if they nest that close to each other or not. Do you do you have yeah. like a metal funnel on the back where it keeps the coons and muskrats and stuff from otters from getting in them? No, it's just the way it's built. It's kind of built on a T, so I don't think they'd be able to get up and around. I don't think I need to get a couple of hen houses here for the Mexican tree ducks that we have here. Do now. you do this every year? Well, uh, we will start. This is our first year doing it with Delta. Last year was our, our first year of starting our, our chapter of okay. Delta. So we had our fundraiser dinner last spring and it went really well. And and then this year we're coming up May 11th. will be our second one. So the money we got, we got, we did hen houses and, going to take some kids out hunting this fall cool that's good it's it's great What's to that? get back we appreciate how long that does it take much. you to build a hen house these ones were really quick because i bought oh, them yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the best way to do it throw a little bit of money at it it's the best problem solver in the it was world like just like a few minutes over the phone and it, yeah, it was, it's probably the simplest thing i built but we're going to try and do our our own this this fall i think we're going to try and build yeah. our own and then what do you do you just scout out where they need to go and plop them out there yeah, just wherever you think that they, wherever ducks usually are in the fall or in the summer, and go talk to the landowner. And we haven't had any problems with that yet, but we haven't done yeah. many. But hopefully, we'll do more and more every yeah. year. How many are you wanting to put out this year? Uh, well, we bought okay. eleven, so we're going to put the tenth one out today, and then the one I'm going to keep for our dinner and just kind of show everybody firsthand what it is. One of the things right. that we're doing. Yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, listen, you got a lot going on up there. It sounds like you stayed busy, and uh, hopefully warmer days are ahead, and you can not freeze your nuts off every time you go outside. Well, yeah, it was plus fourteen yesterday, so it's definitely wow. coming. Do you do Can a you lot do? of? Do you Great shoot a lot of field mallards up there? Yeah, Ooh, that's, that's so much Jeff's, fun. Jeff's yeah. favorite. We, we don't even hunt out of the water. Like we, all the hunts we do are dry oh, field that's, hunts. That's the way to go. What's the weirdest thing you've shot on a field, a dry field hunt? uh weird i don't think anything really weird yet like uh no i i, I can't think of anything to be weird had a lot of weird a lot of weird people in the line <laughs> so y- but, y'all didn't kill no diver ducks or anything like that while you're field hunting no there's been a couple of wood ducks shot just south of us about an hour and we were out working there one day by drum heller and uh, on the way back, I had to take a double take and turn around and go see. And it was a, a Drake wood duck on a little pond. And it was pretty cool to see that because we don't have that. Yeah, yeah that's, here. that's like us out here. We don't very seldom do we ever see a wood duck here. I mean, very, very, yeah. very rare. We used to kill a, a canvas back Drake every year in a peanut spread, but it was never landing. It would just buzz by. There was a lake down below and he'd just be nosy. And here he comes. And we, yeah. Like five o'clock, Charlie on Mash. He come running by every day at the same time. We'd kill one every year, and we don't. We just don't. We don't kill that many weird birds. Not anymore. Yeah. All right, my friend. Well, you keep uh, you keep keeping on up there and put out those hen houses. Hopefully, you have a lot of success this year, and uh, we're make, gonna make uh, make more hens, make more babies, duck and babies. And I'll see you in July at Delta. Correct. Ooh. Yeah, we're gonna go down there. I was. Yeah, we're going to go. I got to get an award when I go down What's there. What's your actually. award? Western Canadian Volunteer oh, that's of the awesome. Year. Congratulations. What did you do to win this prestigious honor? The hen houses? Uh, well, we started up our chapter here, and we had a few guys that were started it before me. 
And then we sold our ice shack business, so I was kind of looking for something to do. So I decided to join up with Delta, and it was kind of very laggy about kind of getting stuff rolling. So I talked to the Western Canada guy that kind of, Bill, he looks after all the Western Canada Manitoba mm -hmm. out. And he convinced me to join the, or to take the chair of uh, Central Alberta Waterfowl Chapter. And then we had our first hunt, our first dinner, which was a huge success. We sold a uh, 140 tickets, and we we're three hundred dollars off a record for your first wow. dinner. That's awesome. So went really oh, well. Yeah. Now, have you been to Louisiana before? You're nope. going to be blessed with the greatest food in the whole world. Yeah, that's what I've heard. And hot. Yeah, yeah, it can be. Yeah, your wife wouldn't like it if she doesn't like some seeds in her jalapenos. No, are you talking about well, hot weather she, or hot food? Both. It's going to be a hotter than shit down there. 100 <laughs> degrees and 100% humidity. It's ball sweating yeah. weather. The, f the food's not the food's not terribly hot. It's not like Thai food or anything, no. but it's it it's can got be some, some kick spice. to it. Yeah, there. I mean, there'll definitely be uh, more flavor than probably you know the, what you he have lives there in, Canada. in Canada. Yeah, you know, <laughs> salt and pepper's about it up there. Um, but it, it won't it won't be bad. The they, food is absolutely amazing. Yeah, boudin. Have you had boudin before? Oh, you nope. got to try some boudin. You're in for a treat. You're gonna love it. Them coonasses, they can make they can make a dog turd taste good. I'm telling you, pretty sure they have. Pretty sure that's what's in boudin. It's a missing ingredient. <laughs> I hate to tell you, don't look at the ingredient list on boudin. Well, hey, that's something to be proud of. Congratulations on that. We will be at Delta with Boss. Come by and see us. We'd love to visit with you. Um, be here before we know it. When, when's your banquet in um, Alberta? May 11th. Perfect. Well, thank you a lot, JJ, and we'll Thanks, see you guys. this summer. Yep. Sounds God, good. God bless you, my friend. We'll see right. you in July. Bye Thank bye. you. Bye. JJ Miller. Um, when is this podcast coming out? Mm -hmm. Friday this week? Sure. Okay. That works for me. Well, I didn't know if it came out this week or not. All right. We will see. Anybody come by and see us. Okay, go ahead. 14-foot great white shark. Lee Beth. Is She's, this the one that you were talking about the other day? Was it South Padre? Yeah. Pinging today. Anyway, here's her map. She was right at South Padre, too. She was up at Corpus. You'd be scared. Oh, at what, what, what's you know, she's not the only one. No, no, you know she ain't traveling ain't by herself. One? No. So December 8th, she was right around Hilton Head. I think that's Hilton Head. We'll call it, we'll call it Hilton Head. Came around here, came around Miami, went almost to Cuba. Went down to St. Castro. January 24th. And then February. Hung she up was around there. Apalachicola. And right there at St. George Island. She went right down there March 1st. And then she went up the Texas coast and then. Now she's on her back. She's at the. She's right there where we fished at last year outside of <laughs> Venice. Now she is yeah. in the shallows. I run them gas wells. Fucking crazy! I saw a dude a video of a guy swimming with one the other day, a fourteen footer, young male. He said, "I nah, just get in the water with him." You can't, you're a fucking in, idiot. In three months, she's been all the way to the beaches in Texas, now Louisiana, swimming over twenty six hundred miles since we released her. The ocean is it's a cool, cool place, but there's so many mysteries there. It's the it's last cool. frontier. Mm. I saw where we have no fucking clue what's all down there. I saw where we stayed at our resort in Mexico. Yeah. The beach has already changed, and that little strip we sat on is not hardly there now. Oh, really? No, and they said it'll move all the time. I wonder if that's her. Yeah, it's probably her from earlier, because that only goes to February 7th. Interesting Damn stuff. It. My dad told me one time when I was little... The firemen, they had a group of firemen, they called themselves the animals. Mm -hmm. And they would go off the Texas coast and they'd go fishing every year and they'd take a fucking boat they'd use at Lake Arrowhead and they'd go 40 miles offshore fishing. And dad said one time they had a, a hammerhead come up and sniff the boat motor that yeah. was bigger than the boat. Really? I was like, fuck, screw that. Yeah. Not good. No, that would really bother Here's me. Here's something right here. She pinged. She ain't very far off the coat. Water that was, right there. That was February 26th. She pinged. She's not. She's not very far. 10 foot of water out there, probably. She's at the, she's at, I mean, she's, you can see land right there. Well, if you, that, that's the third cut right there. If you walk off the water at the, off the ocean, there's three cuts. Well, she's inside of it. Yeah. And, and, and what happens is, is you go to the first cut and the water gets to waist deep and then you're almost at ankle deep again. Yeah. And then you go to the next cut and it's up to your neck. And then it goes up to your waist, and then the third cut, it goes over your head, then it comes back up to about your neck again. Well, 
That's they where say she that's is. where them big fish go up and down them cuts. And you can tell that's like the last little spot of land before it dips yep, off. It dips off into the regular ocean. But she was in between the second and the third cut. So it was prob- she was probably in n- neck deep water. Can you imagine seeing that dun, 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 that old fin coming up at you? You can't. That's at 624. So maybe she knew the beach isn't going to be crowded about that time. I don't know. Could you imagine? Uh, do you think they're attracted to, to shit? Because I would have shit all over myself. That'd been all she wrote for me. I know I debated posting this, but it's near impossible chasing pings. Oh, somebody was probably worried about somebody hunting her. <laughs> I guess you could try to catch her. Oh, that's cool. It's got a camera. She's got a camera on her tag. That's fascinating. Huh? That's crazy. I tell you, I wonder if they can do that on ducks now. Surely if they can put it in the fucking water. Well, we're going to have duck guys on next week, so we'll talk them. Yeah, it's, about gonna, it. it's gonna be interesting to talk to Greer. That's crazy. Yeah, because I mean, basically, Greer. If you we we have Greer Smith coming on next week. Um, he's doing the fifty duck. I can't remember exactly what it's called. Fifty ducks or something like that on Instagram. Uh, but basically, they're gonna take fifty ducks, and I'm probably gonna butcher this just because I fifty ducks North America. Um, over five hundred waterfowl. Anyway. Like I said, I'm gonna butcher it, but they're gonna they're gonna put geo trackers on all these ducks, and then people are gonna be able to track where they are uh, in their migration and kind of you know create a little create a little bond with these with these birds. So uh, that'll be interesting. But yeah, Lee Beth, the Great White, you can go to Outcast Sport Fishing and track her, uh, track her, see where she's at. Make sure you're not visiting a beach where she's near. Sounds like you don't want to get in the water in the Carolinas. A lot of places I don't want to get in the water at. Moorhead, South Moorhead City, North Carolina. Any, anywhere in that in the Atlantic. They're cold water fish though, aren't they? But don't get me in line to you. Because I, I mean that's you. why in the summertime they're by the Cape. Right? I think they like the colder water. There's there's probably no doubt about that. When we were at uh Chatham Mass. They've got a big, uh, they've kind of got an inlet that comes in there, and there's a big sandbar out there. Yeah. And we're watching the sandbar, and all of a sudden you start noticing the sandbars moving, and it's seals and walruses and all kinds. Of, I don't know if it's sea lions, whatever the hell it is. But anyways, you'll see the sharks go up and down there all the time, and they're feeding like crazy on those seals. And yeah. there's people swimming in the water next to them. This dickhead got in the water with her. We ought to try to reach out to somebody here. Get get them on. Talk talk about Lee Beth. All right. You got anything else? I want to go back to that picture of that guy swimming with that fucking shark. Oh, I'm sorry. What the hell is he doing? Gosh almighty. I'm sure you had to tag her. You got to get in the water to tag her. So they caught her. Well, the one, the ones I saw in the Discovery during Shark Week, which comes up in about right before football season gets here, <clears throat> they've got a they, – they get them on this platform that raises up. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. And then they put a PVC pipe down their throat, and they shoot salt water through them to keep them alive while they do stuff. I just I don't. No, this isn't. This is not her. This was. This is an older picture. Five year anniversary. One of the fun day of live. Hooked seven great white sharks in a day and put four satellite tag. Well, they had to tag them. I don't like reposting, but it's sub archives. I don't forget we shoved out. To get to the good stuff. They're in Cape Cod. Mm. I just don't. Mm. Found one acoustic tag. Shark take the bait. Unreal. We landed him. It's a huge big male. Anyway, sounds I, like he had to get in the water to tag it. I don't. I don't get the fascination for wanting to swim with a great white. <clears throat> I, I do. I don't get it. But if you get in that water and you get bit by a great white shark, you're in their backyard. Yeah. I mean, it's a you're sad, sad table. deal. But you're putting yourself in their situation. Sure. And I'm not scared of the water, and I'm not scared of the ocean if I can see. I don't want to get in the water I can't see on. I've been off the coast of Puerto Varda before when you couldn't see very well. I'm floating around and looking back now, I'm pretty fucking stupid probably. But everybody else was doing it and there was a bunch of beer. But I damn sure ain't getting in the water right then. Are you? Uh no, I know better than that shit. No. Probably not, no. no. You're not even gonna get all the you're not even gonna look over the edge of the boat. You're gonna stay right in the center of that boat and think about all the ways it's gonna sink. <laughs> gonna need a bigger boat. But I mean, the odd—if you got in the water, the odds of you getting eaten by that great water low. 
I don't give a shit. If it gets off of that line, it's going to swim away. Would you rather swim with that or an orca? Ooh, probably. I don't know, man. An orca. I don't know. There's never been a case of an orca whale attacking a human being in the wild. I think that's just because they don't look far enough. I saw a video yesterday with two kids swimming somewhere, and the orca whales were going right by them. They don't mess with people. The only time the they orca whales ever hurt anybody. white shark. That they will a shark. Maybe they're protecting humans. I mean, they fucked that thing up. Anyway, interesting stuff going on. Yes, Ho- hopefully they put those. Uh, boy, could you imagine if there's a, a camera on a bird and it flies into a decoy spread and just gets poofed? May, I, it's probably better that they don't put I don't think on. they're going to put Well, you know what? I watched a thing called The Migration one time on Discovery or Amazon or one of these deals. Not The Migration, the, the new cartoon one that's coming out that's going to probably be an anti-hunting show. We watched it. Is it anti-hunter? No. Wasn't? No. Okay, good then. I fell asleep during it. But, you know, Bambi oh. was the first anti-hunting movie, so... No, I don't even think they mention hunters. Okay. Well, anyways, this was showing geese and showed some gray lags, and they had cameras on them, and it showed them going to a decoy spread. And really? Someone shot the one next to it and stuff. But it was an interesting deal, but it was showing the geese. It was over in Europe. Yeah. But it, 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 so they can put a camera on one. Yeah. Did you see the guy in the ultralight that had the fucking eagle come up and land on his foot? Mm-mm. Swung up by him, and then he petted, and he petted the bird and flew by there? I'd be worried about that eagle making me crash my damn ultralight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you've heard of bird strikes, and them ultralight ain't got much going on. No. You know when Tony's fat ass was going to buy him one of those? Yeah, he should have done it. <laughs> He'd be dead. Ah. <laughs> Maybe not. All right. Thank y'all for listening to us. God bless y'all. Come to Tulsa and see me and Andy. We'll be at the boss booth and the autumn booth. Come by and see Maddie Robertson. Hopefully he's fishing. He won't be there, but Dirk, me, and Andy will be there. Thumbs will be there, and Connor will be there. Thanks. God bless y'all. Have a good day. Love you. Bye. Watch for deer. Go check out Mossberg, Stanford Outfitters, Alpha Outdoor Specialties, Hemp Hill Farm. Use our promo code BHP. Double T British Kennels, Mallard Bay. MLR Graphics, Boss Shot Shells, Pacific Calls, BHP25 is our promo code there. Dirty Duck Coffee, Dive Bomb Industry, Shin Gear, Ducks Unlimited, Lucky Duck, and the Looking Glass Podcast.